Hello, YouTube. This is Dakota from Bowtie Media here, and the Grammys, I think, finally understand EDM for the first time in a couple years. It's Grammy season for 2024, as the nominations have just been announced, just been released for all categories, and I must say, uh, the dance ones this year look a lot better than they have in the past. Now, I want to start off by saying I actually don't really love the Grammys. I don't think they're actually the indicator for what is the best album of the year or best song of the year, best record of the year. I don't think they actually do. I think it's a lot of it is a popularity contest, even though there is some, obviously, uh, music critics that do and are a part of the voting process and the ones that actually get in and make it to the top five or six and even the ones that win. But I just think for the most part, it's really not the best album of the year that really wins. It rarely ever actually is. As someone that's been in the review scene a little bit more in the last three years than I have been before, I'm recognizing and have realized now uh, how much better music there is out there that's a little bit more niche, just a tad bit more niche, and uh, is way better than the stuff that is nominated for album of the year. That being said, it still is fun to look at the Grammys and not take it too seriously. And it is great for the artists that are nominated and those that actually win. It's a huge boost to their career and it's a huge and major accolade for them to achieve. Um, but yeah, so I don't really love the Grammys, but they are fun to look at and kind of speculate on what we think will win each year too. But yes, after a bunch of disappointing years back to back to back from the Grammys in terms of the dance category, uh, 2024 hit us with uh, a really solid lineup uh, all around. And uh, let's talk about it. So this year in the dance slash electronic category uh, for albums, you've got uh, KX5 with a self-titled release. You've got Fred Again's Actual Life 3. Uh, you've got Skrillex Quest for Fire. You've got the new Chemical Brothers album. Uh, and you've got James Blake with Playing Robots Into Heaven. And so that is a absolutely killer lineup. I think it does a great job actually of kind of also wrapping all of EDM into five projects. You've got a lot of different kind of uh, various tones and styles here in these five nominations. You've got your more niche electronic music in James Blake's uh, Playing Robots Into Heaven. You've got the kind of more surface EDM that a lot of people know uh, in Fred again. You've got your namesake, your big name with Skrillex this year, Quest for Fire. Uh, and then you've got the kind of mainstay in the Chemical Brothers of people and, or an artist that have been around for years and years and years and years and kind of get nominations all the time. And so you've got them. And then you've got your more like real EDM fan or real EDM enjoyers in KX5, that being a Cascade and Deadmau5 record. So it really covers uh, all the bases here with these nominations. But okay, other than that, uh, why do I think that this was a good year for nominations? Well, I think in terms of scoring wise, uh, these are actually all really solid records. I think in the past couple years, the albums that have been nominated uh, haven't really been the greatest of uh, records and have kind of been, I don't, questionable in my opinion or in my eyes on why they got nominated. If you take a look at the stats, I'm particularly going to be using numbers here from Album of the Year, uh, which is a website that I use that I think is a pretty good indicator for uh, scores and opinions on stuff, and I think they're pretty uh, neutral on EDM for the most part. But um, yeah, this year you've got a lot of stuff that's uh, right around that low 70s to 75 mark uh, out of 100, and which I think is actually the perfect balance because um, it's hard to score really, really high. If an album gets like a 90 out of 100, that is insane. That means it's probably a very small sample album size. Um, but you've, yeah, the top albums in the world are like a 92 or 93 on this website. So anything in the 90s is just ridiculous and anything 80s is also really, really high. So I think the sweet spot for something that is large enough to be nominated for a Grammy uh, and still be good is your kind of uh, mid to, I guess, high 70s is what I would say. But I got a lot of stuff in the 75. So the 75 range is where I kind of like stuff to be and where I think is a good year uh, for nominations is if a lot of stuff is around 75. And we see with the chart, um, a lot of stuff is right around that 75 line and it's uh, in that that top uh, top third echelon, and um, that's why, why I think it's been a good year. If you look back uh, last year at 2023, uh, gold highlighting here, or I guess the orange, which album actually won, and thankfully it was Beyonce's Renaissance, which very much was a dance record. It was a house album through and through. Um, you've got those two albums that are in or above uh, or just around 75, and then a lot of them kind of go down from there. Uh, Bonobo, Fragments was, I think, low 70s. If eight, I don't know, I think it was like 86 on this website. The Last Goodbye was like a 64, and Diplo Diplo was like a 54. And so just, it really wasn't great. And then if we look down even further into the 2022 nominations, uh, they're, they're, they're pretty bad. Uh, the two albums that are even close to the 75 line are weird out of left field ones that I don't even know why they got nominations. Um, I feel like a lot of people haven't really heard them, especially the 10 city one, but, uh, yeah, they were, they were pretty poor, especially that, uh, marshmallow record. I don't know why that one was nominated. 
And then going back to 2021, you see that there's uh, some better nominations here. That everything is right in around that 75 range. And I think this was probably a better year of nominations than this past year will be of 2024. But uh, you see that the last two years uh, have been pretty crap uh, for nominations in the dance electronic world. But yeah, this is one I am really excited for uh, a Grammy list that I'm actually uh, anticipating will be pretty fun for the community and uh, has a, a few things that I actually I don't know who might win. But if I were to give a prediction right now of the five records nominated for album of the year in 2024 for dance electronic. Uh, I do think it's probably going to go to James Blake. I've been a huge James Blake fan, and I think um, The Plane Robots Into Heaven is a very dance-focused record and is one that uh, James Blake had, hadn't come to in a long time. He'd been a pioneer of the early, early, like, underground dubstep era of, like, the actual, like, old-school dubstep sound, uh, the pre-Skrillex era. And, um, but yeah, I mean, you've got your Skrillex here, too. I think Quest for Fire, if they if it takes it, I would be glad with that. Um, I'm okay on the Chemical Brothers here, and uh, KX5 I did enjoy, too. I would not love a Fred Again one, but um, I do think, uh, and I will predict that James Blake will take it for uh, best dance electronic album for sure. Um, so, and and if not, I hope it's Skrillex. But yeah, even in the dance electronic recording nomination, which is just per, per song, uh, there's some good ones in there too. You've got the Black Box Life Recorder by the Aphex Twin. Um, you've got Loading, James Blake. You've got Higher Than Ever Before by Disclosure, Strong by Rami and Fred again. And of course, uh, Rumble with uh, Skrillex, Flodan and uh, Fred again as well. So Fred again, like getting a couple nominations here. And I think this is also a very, very solid list. Uh, Loading uh, by James Blake is personally one of my favorite songs of 2023. And uh, I would again, honestly, I hope uh, James Blake takes us on this one. Another one where I can see uh, also uh, Skrillex taking this with Rumble. But um, if anything, I actually think Strong might win this. I think uh, Fred again's got a lot of love and I can see uh, Rami and Fred again taking this one actually uh, in all things considered with this one. But uh, I would hope Loading wins this one. The only one thing about the Grammys this year that I didn't really love is uh, the uh, pop dance one, which is a lot more pop than dance. Uh, you got two David Guetta nominations in here. Um, you got the, luckily, the Calvin Harris one as well. And so I would hope and pray that Miracle wins this. I think that is an actually phenomenal dance pop record. Um, I think this one uh, needs to win. I, I think this tr this one needs to win uh, recording for uh, <laughs> uh, dance pop. And if it doesn't, lost some more faith in the Grammys. They just don't really understand it sometimes. But um, yeah, the the regular dance electronic categories, uh, solid from the Grammys this year. But yeah, those have been my predictions for uh, the Grammys this year. Let me know what you think specifically in the dance electronic EDM category. And uh, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Other than that, I'm Dakota from Bowtie Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.